This is Dennis McMahon and welcome to Positively Vermont. And today, the first day of October, we're very proud to have with us as our special guest, uh, Anson Tevitz, the Secretary of Agriculture, Food and Markets uh, for the state of Vermont. Uh, this being harvest time and uh, this being uh, the state uh, coping with the uh, pandemic and all those things going on. Uh, I thought it would be a great idea to uh, have the Secretary uh, brief our viewers and other people around the state as to what's going on in the uh, world of agriculture and farming and all those related topics. So welcome very much, Mr. Secretary. Uh, welcome to Positivity. Well, well, thank you, Dennis. And it's great to be with you. Thank you for, uh, for doing this. And of course, it's a little bit different than the last time we were together. Last time, I think we were in the studio together. But with COVID, we do what we can and we survive and we adapt. So it's nice to be with you over, uh, over Zoom. Excellent. And just uh, uh, tell the uh, viewers a little bit about your background. You know, if people, people can look you up on uh, Twitter and see your farm and, and all your very, uh, very interesting uh, aspects of being a farmer, but tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and uh, how you became uh, Secretary of Agriculture, Food and Markets for the state of Vermont. Sure, Dennis. Well, I'm, I'm coming to you from uh, the town of Cabot, and that's uh, where I live. And behind me is a uh, a pasture where I've got a couple of uh, a couple of animals, and um, I grew up on a dairy farm. So this is a this is a dairy farm, and right now uh, we lease a, a great uh, part of the land to uh, an organic dairy farmer. Um, uh, he and his wife and family have uh, a number of heifers here, but they also do the cropping. Uh, they've gotten about I think uh, three uh, three cuttings off the fields this year. It's been extremely dry, so it's I think it's been a challenge. So I grew up on a, you know, a traditional Vermont farm, uh, dairy. We had, uh, we had a sugar bush. We did maple. Uh, we had sheep uh, when I was little. We had about a couple hundred sheep that used to roam the pasture right behind me here. And um, so I'm just, you know, regular old farmer up here on the hill in Cabot. That's great. Well, how did you, uh, tell us a little bit more about your background that you were in general. Yeah, and um, as, I, as I grew older um, in, in the 80s, as I graduated from high school, I had an interest in radio. Um, I listened to the radio while I was milking cows, and I was a big Red Sox fan. So I've always been a fan of radio and still am a fan of radio. Um, and um, so I'd listen to Red Sox games. I'd listen to uh, talk radio out of Boston in New York at nighttime when you could get it. Uh, now through the Internet and through our phones, we can listen to radio all over the world now. Uh, that wasn't the case in the mid-80s. Uh, so I found a place called Emerson College which was a communication school. I went to Emerson College and graduated there from uh, uh, Emerson in 1987. Uh, made my way back to the farm and WDEV radio in Waterbury. Uh, so I worked for WDEV radio for about seven years, transferred to television. I worked in Rutland for a year, um, working for WCAX for a year uh, I, down there, and then made my way back to Montpelier and Cabot in central Vermont, working for WCX TV for, for a number of years, um, ending my uh, uh, television career as the news director uh, at WCX before I took this position uh, as Secretary of Agriculture. That's great. Well, tell us about the state of Vermont in terms of the importance of agriculture, the role of agriculture in Vermont, and Vermont uh, agriculture vis-a-vis -vis the entire country and perhaps the world, the importance of agriculture to our economy and uh, how many people it employs and the, the nature and scope of, of, of that industry. Well, agriculture is very important uh, to Vermont. It defines us. It, it's defined us in the past. It defines us now and into the future. Uh, we live in a state that produces a great deal of uh, food for the world. Um, we are a big dairy state. Uh, we produce a, a tremendous amount of dairy, about $2 billion a year in the dairy industry. Uh, most of that is exported because of our, our small population. With a population of 660,000 uh, 660, people, we can't, uh, we can't drink all that milk or eat all that cheese, although we'd like to. Um, we, have to uh, we have to export it, so we ship it to uh, uh, bigger markets uh, in New England and New York. Um, we also have a, a big maple industry in Vermont. Uh, we have an industry that grows uh, fruits and vegetables. Um, farmers markets uh, are important to uh, what we do. Uh, direct to consumer is a big part of what's been happening. We have 
farm stands, farmers markets. Uh, we have some folks that are growing hemp now. Uh, we have a meat industry where it's very important now, where there's been a lot of interest, particularly in this pandemic, of local meat, particularly poultry and uh, beef and pork and lamb. Uh, so we have, you know, it's a cross section of uh, of agriculture, and it's diversified, and that and that's important. It's it's mainly defined because uh, we have a great a land base. Uh, much of our land uh, remains open and in production, uh, and it also um, helps our tourist industry as well. Uh, people come to Vermont because uh, the land is open, it is productive, it's being worked. Uh, so it's very, very important that we have a, a vibrant agriculture industry to support other industries um, that are in Vermont. That's great. Well, we're about six months into the pandemic right now. Can you give us an idea of how uh, the state has dealt with this and, and how in particular the agricultural community has fared uh, during this crisis? Well, it, it's impacted agriculture in, in a big way. Um, a couple of things. Um, we, we discovered early on uh, as, as uh, America and Vermont and New England all shut down, uh, food was pretty darn important. Uh, we found that people uh, you know, did uh, rush to their supermarket and we saw the, the shelves as sometimes uh, you know, the basics were being taken off the shelves like you know, milk and flour and butter and cheese. Um, so there was a big impact of that early on. Agriculture, although has remained open uh, throughout this, uh, we've been fortunate. We haven't had any real um, uh, difficult uh, situations with health on farms. They've kept going, uh, but it has disrupted a lot of markets, uh, particularly dairy. Um, when restaurants, uh, colleges, schools close, uh, that market is lost to dairy. They're not, you know, they're not drinking milk. Uh, they're not, uh, you know, using butter in cooking, uh, particularly our cheesemakers with our restaurants being closed and some of those bigger markets and those restaurants that love Vermont's uh, specialty cheeses. Uh, those were closed. So those markets were disrupted. And through that, um, uh, the governor, uh, Governor Scott and the agency uh, got together with the legislature and we put together a relief package for our farmers because a great deal of their markets were disrupted and a loss of income to them. So we've been spending the last uh, few weeks uh, taking applications uh, from farmers, uh, whether they are cheesemakers, whether they are dairy farmers, whether they're sugar makers, whether they grow hemp, uh, whether they're a slaughterhouse, whether they're a farmer's market. Uh, we have granting programs to try to make up for some of those losses uh, because of COVID. Um, the dollar figures, we have a $25 million granting program uh, through dairy and about an $8.5 million granting program through working lands, which covers just about everything else uh, that is not dairy. What percentage of uh, farms are, are participating in this grant uh, program right now? Well, we've had, uh, we've had a robust uh, response to this because of the disruption. Um, we, we think we're gonna be okay in money. We, we won't know if it's all gonna be used, but it's, it's, it's sort of trending towards, we will use the, the, uh, you know, the $25 million that's needed for dairy. Uh, right now, the average uh, farmer is receiving about, in the dairy side, about $33,000, $34,000. Uh, but some of the losses that they're experiencing are much greater than that. Uh, some of the large farms, which are farms, dairy farms that have more than 700 cows, uh, some of their losses uh, were predicted early on in this. They were going to lose an income of about a million dollars a year. So they're going to be receiving at most from us is a hundred thousand dollar grant. There is some federal aid that's also coming in to help our dairy farmers and others uh, that work the land. Um, so we hope some of those uh, grant dollars will keep people, um, you know, on the land, on their farms, with their families working. But it's certainly been a a, a difficult struggle. I want to go through some of the uh, other projects uh, or some of the other activities that uh, the uh, agency is involved with uh, at this time. Uh, what about the Maple 100 project? Yeah, uh, Maple 100. Um, um, you know, we think of Maple, um, you know, Vermonters know Maple pretty well. It's, it's been around. It's part of our diet every day. Uh, but outside Vermont, uh, we need to do a better job of letting the world know about this wonderful uh, sweetener. It's a natural sweetener. So this is a this is a marketing campaign that we've uh, that we've taken to um, a lot of it on uh, social media, whether it be uh, you know Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, 
And we're just highlighting all the special things about maple. Um, it's more than just pancakes now. Uh, maple is being infused in barbecue sauces, in salsa, in spirits, in beer, uh, maple creamies. So we're highlighting the special uh, maple tree and, and, and what maple does for uh, our state and how important it is for our sugar makers. So it's just highlighting that uh, maple should be talked about and used uh, year round. So we're highlighting all the 100 best events. It, it could be going on a trail and seeing the wonderful sugar bushes that are out there. It could be uh, visiting a trail that highlights uh, the wonderful habitat that the sugar bush uh, creates for our wildlife, uh, whether it be birds, uh, or it could be uh, some food. It could be a food trail. It could be a creamy trail. Um, all those wonderful things over the next year uh, are going to be talked about with the, with the Maple 100 campaign. And that campaign can be found uh, uh, detailed in the, in the agriculture uh, website? Absolutely, in the website. And if you follow us on social media, we have uh, channels on uh, Twitter for the Agency of Agriculture. Uh, we have a Facebook page that uh, we uh, populate and, and show uh, wonderful images and get information to our farmers and the public of what's happening in the world of agriculture on Facebook. Uh, Instagram is, is a wonderful platform for, for agriculture with all the wonderful images and information and sort of the real stories are told on Instagram about the, the wins and the losses in agriculture. So it's all there for folks uh, uh, to see uh, what's happening every day with Maple 100 on some of our social media channels. Excellent. Tell us a little bit about the dairy industry. Uh, how specifically is the uh, agency dealing with uh, the dairy uh, situation, particularly during this pandemic crisis? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a rough uh, it's been a rough time for many of our dairy farmers. We have lost some dairy farmers. Uh, we knew that was going to happen because of the dramatic uh, price they were being paid when there was too much milk and cheese on the market. Um, but other areas, um, they have adapted. Uh, we're just trying to get through these next few months um, uh, so they can survive at the other end. Um, it, it employs a, a great number of people. Uh, we have some major uh, national brands in dairy that are very important. Uh, we have DFA of St. Albans um, uh, in Franklin County and throughout Vermont. We have Vermont Creamery, uh, which is a, a growing creamery. It has uh, supplies. Uh, uh, a, a product that includes butter uh, and also a specialty cheese. They uh, also take a great deal of our goat's milk and make it into a cheese, world-class uh, uh, cheese maker. And of course we have Ben and Jerry's ice cream. And when we have uh, Cabot, uh, Cabot's a hundred years old this year and um, a very important national brand where you can find your cheese in just about every state now um, uh, throughout the, uh, the United States. So all very, very important to us and uh, just employ a lot of people, whether it be truckers, whether people that are in the manufacturing plants or whether it be our farmers and their families and, and the farm workers. So it's very, very important to, uh, to our uh, economy in Vermont. That's great. I noticed the words choose Vermont dairy in, in some of the uh, items that I've been reading. Uh, do you want to encourage Vermonters and other people to, to seek out our, our products? Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's very important to, um, you know, look for the Vermont label, um, help your neighbors if you can. If we can keep that money in Vermont by uh, spending your, your hard-earned dollars in Vermont by choosing Vermont. If you're, in the, if you're in the dairy case and you're looking to find out if it's uh, Vermont milk, you can uh, look for the code number 50. Code number 50 on the, on the label will indicate that that uh, uh, milk is uh, being bottled in Vermont and very important to us. So it's just, uh, and we've seen a little bit of change. Um, I think a, a mindset, a reset uh, from our consumers. They are really focused on local agriculture now. And I think it's a real opportunity uh, despite the hardships that have been happening out there. A number of folks have started to visit more farm stands, more farmers markets, uh, trying to get more of their, uh, their meat, their produce and their milk from uh, uh, local farmers. So that, I think that's the, that's the opportunity for us and we just need to keep capitalizing on this as we come out of this pandemic. That's great. And tell us about the farm stands that are, that are active despite the uh, COVID-19. Tell us about how the agency is working with those uh, operations. Yeah, it was it was interesting. We, you know, we have Vermont has always had a, a good core of farm stands. 
but when people got a little nervous about traveling out and maybe some did not want to go to a, a, a traditional supermarket, uh, they started visiting their local farm stand. Uh, and those farm stands can have all the staples. You know, they have fruits and vegetables. Uh, they may have a dairy case. Uh, they may have local meat. So we saw a number of those that uh, had those uh, do well, and they were trying to keep up with the demand of the consumer. But we also had some folks uh, stand up new ones. Uh, we had some folks, um, you know, particularly on the meat side, we have a new one that uh, popped up in Franklin County that he's a dairy farmer, but he also had the opportunity to um, use some of his animals and process them and turn them into, um, you know, um, um, uh, steaks and chops and, and so forth. And they, um, they, he, put, he stood that up. So you're seeing that as people adapt to this and anything that uh, over the last six months has been directly to the consumer uh, from the farmer or the producer uh, is, doing, uh, is doing much better than they have uh, traditionally before this. So it's all, everyone just adapting to, to what's out there. That's great. Tell us about this problem of phosphorus and how uh, the agencies mm -hmm. come up with a, uh, a grant to deal with that. Why is yeah. phosphorus such a problem? Well, phosphorus is, is valuable because it's a nutrient and it helps uh, you know, grow crops, so it's needed. But too much phosphorus in one place and too much phosphorus that runs off into the water uh, can create uh, iron vent environmental problems. So this is a, this is a situation where all our, our farmers are um, heavily, heavily regulated now. Um, they have nutrient management plans, so it, it tells them um, you know, how much manure they can put on one particular field or not another field and what the phosphorus levels uh, should be on that field. Um, you know, we have buffers that prevent phosphorus from uh, having the chance to go into a waterway. So there's quite a bit of um, uh, regulation around phosphorus for dairy farmers and, and vegetable producers as well. But um, what we've come up with is um, a lot of people are going above and beyond um, the regulations. So we've de designed a system that um, we are going to um, reward or compensate uh, farmers that reach a certain level that's above and beyond. And we're still working on all the math and so forth on that. But farmers essentially be paid uh, for going above and beyond the normal regulations uh, for improving the environment. Uh, the Agency of Agriculture in Vermont received a, a $7 million um, USDA NRCS grant. And those dollars will be used to stand up this program. And uh, over time, it's a five-year rollout. Over time, after some, uh, um, you know, checking the fields, making sure farmers are going above and beyond, uh, they'll be compensated for that. Uh, so it could be another stream of income. And it also, also helps the environment because as more people adapt these practices, if they know they're gonna be rewarded for them more, um, these conservation practices, uh, they may be inclined more to do more than, they, than, the, than the minimum. Uh, so that will help the environment too. So we're pretty excited about it. It just was announced this fall. Uh, we'll begin the process this winter and hopefully over time, uh, farmers will be rewarded above and beyond the normal regulations about how to maintain and control the phosphorus from running into waterways. That's great. Well, tell us a little bit about another one of the, the um, enumerated projects that are going on and that's the uh, Agricultural Assistance Program. Uh, going on right now yeah those are those are programs that are related to um you know helping people um uh, get their business righted it, even if uh you know the pandemic um has has hurt them uh we have some programs that may be able to fill in some of the gaps of those so for example if they've uh, sustained losses so they uh maybe they were a cheesemaker and they lost uh, a tremendous amount of their income uh because restaurants shut down. Um, they could document those losses with us, send in an application, and we can try to make up for some of those losses using these are federal dollars that have come from Washington. It's all based on losses, or maybe it's something that you've had to add expenses, um, keeping workers safe, uh, maybe working overtime to, um, you know, get the meat cut and processed at a slaughterhouse is an extra expense. And that is because of COVID, because of the need of food and the, the operations that they need to do. That is an added expense. And maybe through these federal 
CARES dollars that we're managing, uh, those slaughterhouses could get some um, relief in, in a grant from us. So that's what that program is about. Excellent. And finally, tell us about this uh, big E, this uh, exhibit um, that went on. Yeah, the big E. The big E is, uh, is in West Springfield, Massachusetts. It's uh, New England's largest fair, and it's one of the biggest fairs in the United States. And of course, large gatherings uh, didn't happen this fall and summer. All our fairs and field days uh, had to cancel, and so did the Big E. Now, Vermont has a, a significant uh, 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 significant event down there because we own a building. Vermont owns a building at the Big E. It's on the Avenue of States. Every New England state has a building there. And what we do is uh, we sell Vermont uh, down in that building. Uh, whether it be cider donuts, whether it be cheese, whether it be pizza, whether it be beer, uh, whether it be um, art, our uh, artists go in there. Uh, we have chocolate people from Vermont are there. Uh, we sell a tremendous amount of maple that goes through there. Well, that didn't happen this year. Uh, so what we did was uh, we stood up uh, something virtually. Uh, the agency put up with the help of the Vermont Tourism Department uh, so people could remember the the 30 plus vendors that normally are there for 17 days. Uh, so it was a reminder to them they can still have a, a little bit of Vermont, even though they couldn't go to the fair. They could go to this virtual web, uh, this virtual uh, uh, Big E fair that we stood up, and they could order Vermont products uh, from them and support those uh, vendors and those companies that they uh, have for a number of years uh, at the Big E. So it was a way to give back a little bit to. Uh, uh, to those wonderful companies, uh, whether it be Vermont flannel or cabbage cheese or, uh, or cold hollow cider with a donut, uh, they could go on that website, uh, order something and help that company um, try to get through these difficult times because of COVID. Great. Of course, we remember the Vermont Strong Campaign and the ability of uh, Vermonters to pull together and work with each other and, and help each other and help other people. I'd just like to Give you this opportunity to to talk to our audience directly and, and, as to how uh, they can uh, assist your agency and how your agency can assist you as we come to the end of uh, 2020. Well, it's 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 not complicated. It's just if 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 they can support their local farmer, um, you know where they are. Um, you know, visit a farm stand, uh, visit a farmer's market. Um, when you're shopping in the supermarket, if you can. If you can do it, um, you know, reach down into your pocket and say, look, I want to support a, a Vermont company because they are your neighbors. Um, and all through this pandemic, um, Vermonters have really rallied, whether they've sacrificed, um, you know, not uh, going to that event or staying home when they had to when they were sick, wearing that mask, um, you know, not getting too close to one another, uh, taking care of their health. That has been part of what's made Vermont successful through this. And I think one thing that's going to make us successful going forward is if we all sort of focus on our neighbors, uh, try to help them uh, with by buying uh, Vermont agriculture products, uh, it will help them, it will help our local economy, and it will help our state in the long run. So that's sort of, it's, it's not complicated. It's, it, it, it's just a, a simple message of, you know, buy local if you can. Well, that's great. I want to thank you for uh, giving uh, us all this, this uh, harvest report, and hopefully we'll be able to speak with you again when maybe things uh, we've got through the winter and, and, uh, or even any other time you want to address uh, our viewers. And uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary, and uh, for appearing here on Positively Vermont. Well, thanks for keeping it positive, and we always are uh, delighted to talk with you, Dennis, and thanks for sharing all this information with your viewers and listeners. We really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, this has been uh, Dennis McMahon for Positively Vermont. Uh, our guest has been Anson Tebitz, the Secretary of the Agency of Agriculture, Food, and Markets. Thank you for watching.